Hi, guys. We are here for this week episode late because we have just been cranking it out. Cranking what out? I don't know. We were cranking on the road. We were doing this road trip that uh, put us in like yesterday. Then last night we did our group tea. And that was a while. And then when by the time we were done, since you hadn't had any sleep in like two days of driving, and Morgan didn't have any sleep for two days of driving. Yes. And I didn't have sleep for days of driving. And also, you know, being with you spiritually, because I would call you, I would look every every hour on the hour, I'd look at my phone to say, Where's my where's my boys and girls? That is true. And the horses. And I would watch <laughs> watch you guys ease on down the road and then hang out at a you know, a horsey hotel. Yes. It was very cool. So it was uh, quite the journey. Yes. And then today we had another exciting day. So now we're home and and what about you? Uh I don't I feel like a zombie. Okay. I was awake in the night and I slept during the day mm -hmm. through the, the driving to keep the pony cool. Mm-hmm. I, it's weird to say I'm jet lagged, but that's what I feel like, even your, though it's your uh your car. You are uh, horsey van um, lagged. lagged. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Uh, do you have a you have a theme for tonight? Uh, maybe our theme is going to be mom and dad. Perfect. You know, it's Father's Day this weekend. Was that part of the theme? Well, I guess half of the theme, sure. Mom and dad. <laughs> the dad's half. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Let it rip. Okay, I thought we'd start this episode a little different. Tell me how you're going to do it. We are going to read an update from, uh, this is from the last story on the March 12th episode titled Complicated Lives. Can't wait to hear about it. Hey y'all, I wrote a couple months back about proposing to my girlfriend and the overwhelming stress I was feeling. First of all, thank y'all so much for the extra boost of courage. Whenever I would get stuck in my head, I would go back and listen to your advice. And thank you to those who shared encouraging comments. You all gave me a moment of clarity. We can all do special things in our own way. To us, an engagement is a commitment, a promise of a life together. We'd previously discussed a long engagement and no rush into a wedding, which made that promise all the more special. I realized a thoughtful proposal can just take some creativity and problem solving which was a really handy mindset to be in. Our trip was basically a disaster. I'll spare you the details, but the first leg of our stay was absolutely amazing. It then devolved into getting lost and driving for hours, an Airbnb out of a horror movie, and ultimately cutting our trip short. And a great story. We still had an amazing time with each other, joking and laughing through all of the mess and tears. But I still hadn't popped the question. On our drive home, I was beginning to think that Jerry's idea of the frog costume might not be so bad. I was heartbroken and wrestling with accepting that I would have to postpone the proposal. Then, my girlfriend suggested we explore a local state park since we never got to go on our planned hike. We came to a beautiful spot and she wanted to set up our tripod for a photo. So I set it to video grabbed my little box that was still in my backpack and got on one knee. It was such a special moment, just the two of us. She was beyond surprised. We just sat in the sun and listened to the birds hugging and giggling. She's very sentimental, so I made the ring box and put together a scrapbook for her, which were touches she loved. It was so funny to me that after all of my stressing and over planning, she was the one who unknowingly set up the actual proposal. Also, I did talk to my mom before the engagement. I've always been afraid that she will be ashamed of me as I am the black sheep, but she was very supportive. We have a lot to work on in our relationship, but I know she truly loves me. My fiance's family and our friends are thrilled and we're just so happy to be together. Looking into her eyes the moment I got on one knee was the most magical thing. It made all the stress and initial disappointment worth it. So to everyone out there, just know that if they're truly your person, they will recognize your effort and feel your love for them. Thank you again. Amen. Hallelujah. What, how wonderful. 
It's a good one, yeah? That was a great one. Great start. I feel like we're due for an update episode soon Mm -hmm. because we have so many good ones like this. I love it. And then you get to find out, like we always say, keep us updated. Well, there's your update. Well, we get the update, but it's really nice that everybody else does too. Yeah, right. Okay. Number one. Number one. Of course, I will start by saying how much I love THT and FKS. Easily my favorite podcast, and I feel like I could be friends with all of you. Okay, so on to my issue. Yes. My 29 female dad has been married three times, once to my mom and then twice after, all ending in divorce. My parents' divorce happened when I was young, and I don't actually remember them being together. My dad had spent a year in jail when I was in second grade for having multiple DUIs, and during that time in jail, he got married to my first stepmom. They had a child together, so I have a sister who is now 19 years old. That relationship did not end on the best foot because stepmom number one at the time accused slash lied about my dad doing things he did not do, and we had a whole court issue over it. After that marriage ended, my dad married his third wife stepmom number two. I wasn't present for that marriage either as I was in college and it all happened so quickly. I wasn't ecstatic about the relationship, but she was nice to me and my sister, so I was thankful for that. Ultimately, they ended up getting divorced because of a difference of faith. Now on to the issue. My dad did the whole, what would you say if I told you I was dating someone bit? And because I thought it was hypothetical, I answered by sighing and saying, oh man, I really don't know. He ended up telling me that he has been talking to a lady who lives in Texas, who shares a mutual friend with my dad. Mind you, we live in North Carolina. Instantly, I am on guard because at this point, I just want my dad to be single and can't imagine having yet again another stepmom. He started off saying that they were just getting to know each other and nothing was really going on but he was able to answer every question I had about her easily so I knew there was more going on than he let on. The other night, he told me that they are officially dating and in a long-distance relationship. I want to tell him I'm not a fan of the idea of him dating someone else, but at the same time, I want my dad to be happy. I can't imagine saying that my dad has been married four times. I can't see myself wanting to get close to her and her kids but I also don't want to come off as the stereotypical mean stepdaughter. Best of all, he just told me she's coming here to North Carolina to visit and will be meeting me and my grandparents. I'd love to know how you all would handle this situation. How do I tell my dad I'm not happy about the idea of him being in another relationship and having to meet someone else without making him feel bad? I know the lady he is dating is probably nice, but I'm not totally interested in having to deal with another marriage more step-siblings, and everything that else that comes with it. Help. You're probably not going to like my, my suggestion, but I'm going to give it to you anyways. This is your dad's life, and the, the, the place where you need to be right now is kind of like going skiing. There's the hill. You may, not, you may not like the hill, but enjoy it the best you can. And if you never go back to that ski resort again, it's okay. And if you do, it's okay too. You just got to roll with it. It's his life. Don't worry about getting you, you Just go with it with zero expectation. Zero. And you may find out that that was a great idea and just to ignore her because you don't like her. Or you may find out she might be kind of cool. And you never know however we'll end up with your dad and her because that's up to them. Because if your dad's programmed to sabotage these relationships, it's just... It's just another number. And if it's another number now, it'll probably be another number again later. So just, you know, just treat everybody real for who they are. So if if the woman is a nice woman, treat her as a nice woman. Just be respectful of her. Don't worry too much about all the relation stuff that they go through. Um, But treat her, let, let her either gain your friendship or lose your friendship, but that's all on their own. And don't involve him in that part of it. Yeah. That's my idea. Yeah, I mean, just because the others were the way they were and Mm -hmm. they ended the way they did doesn't mean that'll happen again. And it may. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, there is a pattern, but also at the same time, maybe she's just different. Yeah. And maybe it goes completely not the way you're expecting. I mean, she's obviously looking for companionship. Your dad's looking for companionship. And if they find it, bless their hearts. And if, you know, he's turns out to be a turkey and that's what's going on in these relationships and these women are being sucked in, I don't know. But sometimes even their their own subconscious are, you know, find the attraction from whatever, you know, that 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 their subconscious sets them up for all this stuff for this behavior. You just don't know. Well, our ideal outcome for my dad to stay single. Ha ha. No, but seriously, I want everyone to be happy. I don't want this meeting to be awkward, but I also want to know her intentions. I want to be able to tell my dad how I feel without making him feel bad. Additional info, the lady he is dating saw my dad in a picture and asked to be introduced to him. She has also been married twice. So... You know, maybe they are just both trying to find their people and maybe this is the right one. You never know. Just, you know, like we'll go back to square one. Just let everybody have their own, uh, no expectation. And if they're nice, let them be nice and enjoy the relationship. And if it if it goes, it goes. And for whatever reason, it should fail and you like her and you want to have a continued relationship, great. And if you want no relationship, everyone's independent. And you'll see how it rolls. But I wouldn't go in pre predetermined. So you wouldn't say anything about your feelings? No. I wouldn't say a thing to her dad because it 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 really doesn't matter. She's a grown up. You know, she's an adult. Go worry about your own relationship and say, you know, dad, this is your relationship and you do your thing. And I and if I have when I'm dating, I really, you know, I, I hope you'll give me the same respect. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting with relationships, how the people in them go from being the closest people in each other's life Mm -hmm. to nothing, unless there's kids and you co-parent stuff like that. But you know, any relationship or breakup I've been in, if it, if you have a breakup, you literally separate, you know, permanently. Sometimes. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like you go from being close, close, close to distant, distant. Mm-hmm. And so I can imagine as a kid going through this so many times up until now you're an adult, but just going through this. The pattern. Yeah. You meet someone, you try to start establishing that relationship and then all of a sudden they're gone and then you do it again and they're gone. And so I get that, but I think what you're saying is right. I mean, it's it's his deal and you know, maybe he'll have like six or seven wives and and that's just how it is. But again, that doesn't have to have anything to do with you, but it also can because if he ends up with the right person and he's happy, then that's great. And then if you also end up really having a, a good relationship with them, then even better. Mm-hmm. Like I said, have no have no predetermined uh, destination here. This is play it by ear, day by day. And if you guys like each other, great. And if you uh, don't let their relationship affect your relationship. Yeah. You'll see real easily if you have a relationship with her and, or you think that you don't want one, then don't, this is, you're, you're an adult. You get to make those choices. And if she, if they are happy, let them go do whatever they're doing. Okay. Okay. We're going to go for number two. One of this week's partners is Lumi. I was going to a very stressful meeting today and I realized as I was about to get there, I forgot to put on deodorant and I could tell because I could literally already smell myself sweating and getting nervous. And you called me. And I called my dad and I was like, did you leave the house yet? Can you bring my deodorant? And guess what I got? I got my Lumi toasted coconut, put it on. Not only did it stop my sweat in its tracks, I smelled fresh the rest of the day. I still smell fresh actually upon checking just now. It works for up to 72 hours and can control odor everywhere from your pits to your feet, privates, you name it, you could put Lumi there. And it is because it was designed by an OBGYN, is paraben free, baking soda free, and pH balanced. So if you're ready to try it for yourself, Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free 
free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code FKS for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code FKS at L-U-M-E D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Okay, number two. Dos. My mom, stepdad, and little sister are going on a family vacation without me. Why? Hi, guys. I've been watching you guys almost since the beginning, but never submitted anything because I was too nervous. LOL. Don't be nervous with us. We're family. (laughs) I love everyone a part of the THT and Father Knows gang, and I hope y'all are doing well. I'm not always the greatest with words, but I'm going to try my best here. So it's the beginning of June as I write this. My 26 little sister, eight, just finished up her school year, and I just found out that my mom, 40s, stepdad, 50s, and her are going on a family vacation together in less than a week. I had heard nothing about it up until now. For context, I no longer live with my mom because we've always had a rocky relationship, Nothing too bad, but we've never been close. I had to move in with my grandparents about two years ago for my own mental health. We only live a few minutes apart, but the separation has helped for sure. Now, I'm no angel either. I've definitely contributed to fights in the past when I could have instead taken the high road. I love her, but I know that if it weren't for my sister, we probably wouldn't have a relationship today. Anyway, I only found out they were going on vacation because my grandma told me that we'd have their dogs when they were gone. Confused, I asked, where are they going? She tells me that they're going on vacation for a few days. All I could reply with was, oh. I've been crying in my room on and off for the past few hours, and I don't know what to do. I know they don't have to invite me on vacation with them, but it hurts because it feels like they didn't say anything on purpose. Like they didn't want me there. I would have understood if they just told me that, if that's the case. I say it feels purposeful because she and my stepdad went on a mini overnight getaway that was gifted to them a few months ago, and she could not stop talking about it. She told me and my cousin immediately, but to be fair, that could have been because we were the ones asked to stay with my sister at their home for that weekend. I know this is just the straw that broke the camel's back of my emotions right now, not even including other things I'm dealing with right now, but I feel helpless. I know I have a right to feel however I feel, but I'm scared I'm overthinking and overreacting. I can barely get a text or call back from my mom on the best of days, and when I do, she will sometimes cut me off mid-sentence to change the subject so she can vent about work or home stuff. I'm happy to be a listening ear if that's what she needs, but it gets to be a lot sometimes, especially when she rants about stuff pertaining to my stepdad or little sister. I've never been good at being vulnerable. I'm not great with confrontation. I downright hate it. But even when I've tried talking to my mom about how I feel in the past, when we have fights, she immediately goes to the, oh, so I'm such a bad mother, huh? I'm just the worst route. I don't know what to do, but any advice you could give would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. You know, you, it, I, under, I truly understand where you feel that you're left out and being rejected. I'm not even going to try to bring reason, whatever they might be thinking. I have no idea what's in their mind. But what's in your mind is that you definitely feel hurt. And I think you have to articulate that uh, to your mom and make it just honest and say, I just want you to know, I'm sure you have your reasons. I just really want you to know that I feel hurt and I don't know why. I mean, I know I'm 26. I know I have my own life. I know I'm an adult, but I still feel I'm part of the family. And I just feel sad that you didn't even ask to see, you know, where I was or what I, what way way I felt about it. And it's not something I want to fight about. I just want to understand it. So if you can calmly tell me what your thinking was, that would be great. And then you'll know the answer. And it will be hopefully clear because you put a cap on the fact of defense just to explain it to you. And she can't yell because you pulled the trigger about the defense. I don't need you to defend yourself. Just, I, I just want to know. 
Yeah, I mean, how this is handled feels like this will really dictate how this relationship between all them evolves. Mm -hmm. And you could even bring that up as I just would like to know instead of constantly going through things like this. I mean, if this is the first thing, I believe there'll be more. You're blatantly leaving out someone who you know you're leaving out. I mean, it's not like, oh yeah, we didn't even think you'd want to. It's it's very purposeful. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, we need to get to the bottom of it. We need to sort it. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to keep maintaining a healthy mm -hmm. relationship with all of you. We just need to sort this out so I can not have to do this back and forth and and always be trying to figure it out. I'd rather just know and figure out how we can move forward mm -hmm. because this, it for me, this just, it's not an accident. It's not like you didn't think about me. You did think about me, but just in a way where I wasn't going to be included. That's right. They thought it out. And so let's sort this out so I can not deal with this stuff anymore. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Let us know how it goes. If anyone else has suggestions and comments, it's early enough. You can tell her. That's it. Let's roll on. Another one of this week's partners is Gab. Did you have the internet when you were growing up? No. I feel like you would have gone into some trouble. Oh, you I would have grown up with the internet. Yes, there's no doubt about it. And dad is trouble. But imagine kids, the power that they have at their fingertips, which is where Gab can come in. Gab is the leader in safe smartphones and watches for kids, teens, tweens. It doesn't have social media apps. It doesn't have an internet browser. It does have GPS tracking. And Gab's devices were built from the ground up specifically for kids and teens as a way to keep your kids and you safely connected. I'm sending this to my little niece Eloise, but it's going to allow Matt and Amy to locate Eloise. They can call her on the watch, send her a message, and Eloise can do all of that back discreetly if she wants. It has unlimited talk and text, a clean music streaming app, and over 100 third-party apps that can be installed at you, the parent's discretion. You know, I was at a mall growing up and I had someone following me and I didn't have a cell phone at the time. If I would have had this watch, I would have easily been able to ping my mom or dad and get someone there to help. And this is the absolute best time to check them out because right now Gab is offering $25 off any device to new customers with no contract required. That's $25 off any Gab smartphone or smartwatch. Just go to gab.com slash FKS. That's where you'll get the best deal. That's Gab, G-A-B-B dot -B com slash FKS. Gab.com slash FKS. <coughs> Where'd you come from? Yeah, you guys didn't think you'd be seeing me, did you? <laughs> oh, Chuck. Uh, we're going for number three. Number three? Number three. Oh, my gosh. What do you got for me? I read the... I haven't read any of these. Justin prepared this whole theme for us today. Yeah. And I'm pissed by the first line, so this is going to be a good one. Okay, let's go do it. Am I wrong for being upset that my family threw away my childhood belongings? Two years ago, I, 26 female, moved away from home to go live with my fiancés, 27 males, family in the next state over. When leaving, I was unable to bring all of my belongings with me. And knowing I wouldn't be home for a while, I packed everything away into my closet for when I came home next so I could grab all of my things then. All of my pictures from childhood, my toys, clothes, my prom dress, cap, gown, literally any and everything I could not fit into my car. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to go back home as I don't get much time off of work. It was decided that my sister, 40 female, and her husband would move into my childhood home to live with my grandmother, 84 female, so she wouldn't be alone and to save on paying rent. We were all so happy for this as my grandmother is unable to care for the house in any way. My sister asked me about using my old bed and mattress that I'd purchased, and I told her I was happy for her to use it. A few days before they are to move in, my mom told me over dinner, my sister had someone come in and threw everything in my closet away. All of my things. They never reached out once, 
to ask me to come get any of it. I didn't find out about it until all of my things were already gone. I immediately texted my sister, and her response was that she wasn't going to argue with me. All I wanted was an apology. I called my grandma immediately after, and she tried telling me that I should be happy my prom dress was donated to someone who needs it more than me. I told my grandma that was nice, but it was mine, and I didn't want it donated. I was just sobbing on the phone. I have not spoken to either of them since. I cried so much that day. It feels so wrong to say it, but it's like all of my things were lost in a disaster. One moment, all of my possessions were safe, and the next, they were just in the trash. I still feel guilty that I haven't talked to my grandma since that day, but every time I think about calling her, I get so sad and angry, I just don't even want to speak to her. Am I wrong to still be so upset? If they had just told me to get my shit out, I would have had several friends more than willing to take my things for me, but nobody respected me enough to even reach out before throwing away all of my childhood possessions. I had a really awful childhood, and it feels like every bit of it that I did love is now gone. I'm just so distraught how they would do this to me without even calling me first. I can absolutely relate to this person. Absolutely. Um, I have a sister. I have two actually, but one sister is a champion for thinking that she is going to clean up. And her idea way of cleaning up is to come in with a giant dumpster and she goes into whatever room that's going to be on the attack and go like this and just take everything, knock it off the shelf and it goes into the dumpster. So disrespectful. It was very disrespectful. And I, I don't have my high school annual. I have nothing from when I was a kid because she went, when I moved to Minnesota, she went like this and everything got wiped out. And that was the end of it. What you do win, unfortunately, it's not a great win, but here's what you get. Every time you want your annual or you want that prom dress, you get to look up and put your eyes up in your head and said, God, I want to kill her. <laughs> I don't think that's a positive to get. But- that's it. That's all you get. I mean, it's 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 done. It's over. And it's it's rude. It really is. The point is, is what I'm trying to get to is that there is nothing we can do. And How do you move past these feelings? You, you just have to just go back and consider it's just stuff and we got to go forward. You can certainly say, I found that very disrespectful and I know I'll get past it, but I will tell you that was the most rude thing you could have ever have done. And that's all you, that's all you can do. Honestly, I think you should sue her. And I, I'm honestly, I'm kind of confused because the grandma was like, at least it goes to someone who needs it. Mm -hmm. So did they throw it away or did they donate it? They, they, she, Their story's not that straight. The, the answer is that it's gone. It might not be. What if it is actually at Goodwill and they're just saying it got thrown away mm -hmm. so they don't have to go through the embarrassment of her going to Goodwill and she saying, could certainly, I'm sure hey, she's already asked that question to Morgan. I'm sure she said, where'd it go? Then why did the prom dress get donated, but the rest of it got thrown away? I think There's that, conflicting stories here. So why don't you, do, if, if that is the case, I would certainly ask him where they donated it and where it went. You can turn, I, I'm sure she's already done this. I honestly think this is a time in your life. This is an experience you just went through. This heartbreak, this trauma. I really think the relationship with your sister is done. And what gets me so riled up, she had the respect mm -hmm. to ask you if she can use your mattress, mm -hmm. but didn't have the respect or decency or human compassion to say, hey, can you get your stuff out? I need, I need to put my clothes in this closet. I'm going to be living here now. Come get your stuff. Oh, can I use the mattress? not going to ask you about your stuff in what fucking world i i am going to say that life is a long life be done with her i don't think that she's going to be prepared to be done with her sister yeah Blood. i would be if if any of my family did this to me done okay that's you done that's you this is heartbreaking i i'm just going to say life is long and i would take it as a lesson to go learn from 
and certainly teach her as well. This is fucked up. It is fucked up. But it, again, I, I understand it was all her stuff. I've been through it. But at the end of the day, it's stuff. I wonder if people out there would think like the way you just moved on and moved past it without like being upset. Me? I was furious. I feel like you're just like, I, you're too I, casual about it. But I was furious, but I but age has tempered me. Years have tempered me on this stuff. And I realize at the end of the day, it is in, in the word I keep using, it's stuff. It's all it is, it's stuff. Half of us put put the stuff away and we collect it for years. And the only person who's got to clean it out is you the day that I die. It's it's stuff. You don't want it. No one else is gonna want it. And I understand she wanted her prom dust for whatever might be a reason. And she wanted those books and she wanted those pictures. I wanted all my all my elementary school pictures that are gone. I thank God I'm finding them on Facebook from the from my the kids I grew up with that are posting them. It's sad. Yeah. It was rude. You're right. It's heartbreaking. I I really, really feel you. I mean, I think you do say it well. Like it feels like you lost all of your things in a disaster. And the disaster is your fucking sister. So what happens if she lost it in the disaster? I think, honestly, I think a disaster would feel better than having your family betray you and not respect you enough. Like, I would rather lose my stuff in a flood than have someone I care about wreck it and throw it away. Like, that right. was so intentional. I can't control the weather. I, I I get the heartbreak. I get the, but I'm going to go. So I, I'm just going to give you from the years that it is so past and behind me that there are so many it's, other other yeah. things in life that are it's so much more fresh important for you. It's just you learn how to cope with it, and I'm just trying to give her the the 30 year advancement. I'm trying to move her through time to saying, hey, there's so, so many there there are things that are much more important, and take this as a step to educate her. Let her know what she did and how painful it was and how disrespectful you found it. But you have to move on. I'd sue her. I know you would. But let's see what she does. So ideal outcome, not feeling guilty for being sad. You don't have to feel guilty. for you, Your you have, feelings you have, are valid. You have the right to feel sad. You are absolutely valid. What happened was atrocious behavior atrocious and your grandma trying to justify it. Ugh, just terrible. But I do know how grandmas get and your grandma probably feels bad or guilty and that's her way of being defensive. Um, but your sister really, really, really fucked up. I mean, I, 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 I look at a story where my brother gave away something that was very precious to me. It was my, that belonged to my dad. And he gave it to somebody who my dad would never have given it to. And I went absolutely ballistic. And I mean, we're talking about DEFCON 5 or DEFCON 1. I mean, I went all the way to the top. So the, the answer was, is yes, you get over it. You heal from it. And don't let it be the determining factor of the rest of your life with this thing. It's, you, you just have to let them know the pain, the frustration. You may want to do a payback one day. I mean, that's what I did. I got even or got throw, ahead. Throw her shit away. <laughs> but the end, the, the end of the day is that you just, you got to move on and you got to get past it. In the appropriate time though, like you don't have to move on tomorrow. No, you can grieve. You can grieve. You can have that time. There's no appropriate timeline. If you don't want to talk to her for five years, that's fine. <laughs> like don't feel pressure to move on and drop it because someone is saying, Oh, in 30 years, you'll look back and it's not that. No. In 30 years, you might look back and say, that was extremely painful mm -hmm. yesterday. That was extremely painful 30 years ago. Whatever it is, it's still painful today. Everyone is so different and you are very valid for your feelings. I, I certainly think that you have the full right to go to your sister and, and say- And throw her stuff away. And <laughs> let her know how much pain she has put you in and that she owns this. Yeah. For the rest of your life. And if it was in reverse, you would you would understand why she was so angry with you and disappointed and and hurt by you. So I would try that one. I would let her know quite clearly uh, 
what she really did and wait for the apology. She needs to, you need to see the remorse. Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Keep us posted, please. Tell me how you wreck her shit. Let's go. Update. Number four. Okay. The last one with me before I pass it back to Justin. How do I tell my mom I don't want her to drink at my wedding? My fiance, 39 male, and I, 29 female, are getting married this October, 2024. My mom, 55 female, has a problem with drinking and is becoming a difficult person. She'll cause a scene, yell, cry, and storm out when she doesn't get her way or someone says something that hurts her feelings or goes against her thoughts. Even when she's completely sober, it's literally impossible to try to have a conversation with her about your feelings, whether they be your current feelings or how you felt 20 years ago involving her. I have a lot of trauma and feelings about my childhood that I wish I could just have a sit-down conversation with her where we could both talk about our views and feelings, but that is just not possible. Anytime I or my sister, 34 female, say anything about our childhood that isn't praising my mom, or we mention that something in our childhood wasn't the greatest, she starts a pity party saying, quote, I'm just such a terrible mom. Then my sister and I have to baby her and basically convince her we were joking or that we never said she was terrible. Honestly, I think it's just a guilty conscience for her not being the best mom and putting her boyfriend before us. My problem slash question is, I don't want her to have a drop of alcohol during my bachelorette party or on my wedding day. She could only have one drink and go from zero to 100 really quick in a bad way. I don't want her to ruin my day by acting the way she does when she drinks. My fiance knows the police chief in town where we're having our wedding reception and said if anyone acts the way my mom acts when she drinks, he's calling the police chief and having them escorted out. I said that's fine by me, especially if it's my mom. Our wedding day is stressful enough and I don't need her drunk pity party to add more stress. How do I tell my mom I don't want her to drink at my wedding? Frank, frank and clear. Point blank. Say, mom, uh, your behavior when you drink after one drink is just, it's not going to work for my wedding. It's not going to work for me. And I'm going to ask one present from you. Please do not drink at the wedding. Not even a glass of champagne. Nothing. Because just what does happen. And the bachelorette party, you know, when we have that, it's a non-drinking night for you. And if that's what you, if you want to drink, then I have to ask you not to come. Stay home and drink. If it's important enough for you to come, it's important enough for you to, to give me my gift that I'm asking. Don't drink. Yeah. I wonder if there's any other way you could like ask someone to keep an eye on her too and make sure that she almost has like a sober buddy. Well, I would certainly let her also know that if you if she does drink, the you're you're drinking knowing that I'm going to have you removed. As soon as I see your behavior change, we will have you removed. You're going to be taken away. To, we're going to there's going to be a bouncer and you're going to be escorted out. You might be kicking and screaming, but you are going to go and you and I'm telling you right now, don't do it. My expectation of you is not to drink. The accountability is that you will be escorted out. Yeah. It's sad that you have to have this conversation, but alcoholism is just such, such a big, mm -hmm. hard, painful thing. There's a bit more additional info. Okay. Um, I realize I made it sound like she does this every week, but it is only once every couple of months, still way too often. Ideal outcome, my mom will calmly listen to my request and not fly off the handle and accuse me of calling her a terrible mom and an alcoholic. You're not calling her a terrible mom. You're just going to say, mom, I'm, I'm letting you know that this is an expectation. Mm -hmm. You're not a terrible mom. I'm just letting you know we're not going to go down that road, especially once you're drinking because you can't be handled. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. No way around it. No, and very direct. Yeah, and that's hard. Like We talked about this a lot in group T. It's really hard when you transition from childhood to adult or just in general of having these tough conversations with your parents, but it just must be done. Um, I'm thinking of our friend 
Marina and Archer from Group T yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a lot of like mom convos come up mm-hmm. and it's just one of those things that, you know, people aren't mind readers and you have to be able to say your feelings no matter how, you know, scary it might be or the fear of the pushback. Your feelings are valid. Your fears are valid. You know, she's proven she can't be trusted with alcohol. So it's time to have that that conversation. And don't kiss her ass. Don't jump to make her feel better. She does that on purpose and is playing the victim for a reason. It's worked in the past. So hold her accountable. Mom, you're not drinking. Clean, concise. And you can't tell her you're not drinking. You say, Mom, I would really appreciate it if you didn't drink at my wedding. If you do choose to do that, you know, there's a chance you're going to be asked to leave. So have the conversation. It's going to go fine. As fine as it can, but it's just, it's, it's got to be done. You deserve a happy, amazing, beautiful wedding day. And this could really help. By the way, if you're wedding, you don't want me to drink. Not a problem. Easy. You're going to have some wine. You'll be, you'll be fine. But what I'm saying is that it's okay. Whatever you want. Some people don't have that, um, composure around alcohol. So everyone's got their, their stuff. We're going to boot you out of the chair. I'm running away. Bye. Bye. Another one of this week's partners is HelloFresh. HelloFresh. Well, as you know, we love HelloFresh. We do. And actually, we had the opportunity to cook a really, really good meal the other night. Do share more. Well, we actually cooked these turkey and Greek salad lettuce wraps. Where was I? I'm not sure where you were, but it was really good. And you did a HelloFresh meal without me. It was like we were at the five-star restaurant. Unbelievable. With HelloFresh, you get farm-fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Make delicious food a priority this summer with quick, convenient recipes delivered right to your door. Just choose your meals and select a delivery date. HelloFresh handles all the meal planning, shopping, and most of the prep, so all you have to do is open your box and get cooking. And with HelloFresh, we've started to cook like little chefs and we're not stuck in the rut of cooking the same thing every night of the week. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FKS apps for free appetizers for life. One appetizer item per box while subscription is active. That's free appetizers for life at HelloFresh.com slash FKS apps. HelloFresh.com slash FKS apps. Number five. The grand finale. Here we are. Let's do it. Bum, 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 Welcome bum, back, bum, by the bum, way. Bum, 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 bum. Here we go. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Longtime listener of the podcast and really look forward to it every week. Your fatherly advice is really calming as I have a very difficult relationship with my parents. My parents are both alcoholics, always have been. I moved out when I was 18 with my now husband. We are now 27 and 30 and just welcomed our first child, a little boy. Wonderful. Congratulations. This is the first grandchild on my side. My parents were excited for such a short while. The last time they saw him, he was three weeks old. He is now four months old. They don't call or make plans to come visit, but when I do talk to them, they'll say, wow, I love him so much, and just be giddy about him. Meanwhile, my husband's family thankfully treat me like their own blood, come over every other week to visit. My mother-in-law is even moving from her current place, which is two hours away, to our town so she can watch our son when I go back to work. Anyway, what I'm really struggling with right now is how to cope with not being loved by my own parents. On one hand, I'm relieved that they aren't around, which is hard to explain in a short read, but we've had some real difficulties and I've gone no contact with them before after several fights. My mom didn't come to my baby shower. I'm their only daughter, and I have two brothers who still live with them, 22 and 23. My dad didn't talk to me at all while I was pregnant unless I initiated. All they do is drink and drink. On the other hand, I feel abandoned and unloved, and I hate them for it, but I also wish with all my heart that they weren't the parents that I deserve to have. Parents that loved me and cherished our little baby, but they don't. 
The first time they met our baby, when he was two days old, my mom said, I didn't think I was going to love your baby, but I do. She said this while holding him beside me. Who says that? Me being freshly postpartum, breastfeeding, in a diaper, and still in lots of pain from birth. I cried with my husband that night over what she said. Now that I have my own child, I could never imagine treating him or his partner the way they treat us. I know it's a two-way street, but at what point did I become responsible for our relationship? My heart is conflicted because I want to love them and be loved by them, but I'm not and I don't. All this to ask you, how do I go about finding a healthy balance? Is there such a thing with addicts? You know something? I grew up in a home that was nothing like this. And you might have been raised in a home that was nothing like this. But unfortunately, there are homes in our country that are like this in our world. And I'll never understand it. How a parent, and typically it might become from the environment they grew up in, and that could be a part of it. And you'll, you yourself, OP, have an idea of what they grew up around and what makes, might make them what they are and what, what they, how they tick. I grew up in a home where my father yelled. And what, what changed in my household is there is never yelling in my household. And here is something that's very similar with you. You grew up in a home where it was very uh, dysfunctional is what I see it. And you said, you know something? How can I not love my child? with all my heart and all my soul. How can they not? The main thing is, is that you've given your child all the love and, and you're going to keep that balance and that, that warm nest in your, in your life with your children as they, as they go through it. So I think it's amazing. You can't control your parents. Simple and simple in fact. So don't try, don't even worry about it. I mean, it, I'm sorry that the reality is, is that they are what they are. But the person that's losing out is them. So when it comes to your child, just give that child all the love, all the nurturing, all the understanding, all the compassion, all the trust, everything that goes along with raising children. And your kid will be great. And you have your own family. You have your own house now. And I wouldn't worry about the other ones because they, they haven't deserved it at this point. And they might get the message. They might figure it out on their own and figure out, you know, as, as your baby gets older, how cool that baby is. And that's their grandchild. And they really do want to be a part of their life. Probably not because they're not thinking that way. That's not their importance in their life. Alcohol is. So, yeah. I mean, I can't, I just can't imagine dealing with this. And I feel very sorry that you are, I just feel that maybe, you know, there is no control. There's there's no way for you to control them to be able to have all this stuff that you probably thought you'd have, wished you would have, wish you have now uh, in in a relationship with them. And having this new baby has really put that in the limelight where you see the contrast of how your husband's parents are and the things they're doing and how that's such a tight family unit and they're coming together with you guys. And it just makes you feel so bad because it's quite the opposite on your end. Something that might help and maybe therapy can help with this is to try and get to a place where we're looking at the things we do have. Mm -hmm. the, the, the healthy, beautiful baby, the amazing husband that you have. And the family. And the, his side the, of the mm -hmm. family, because some people end up with both sides that kind of go AWOL. And so being grateful for some of the stuff you do have, despite how hard not having that on your side mm -hmm. is. Um, I want to add the additional info. Sure. My parents have been alcoholics since I could ever remember. They are both in their 50s now and haven't slowed down one bit. There were always strange people in our home and we were constantly neglected, verbally abused, and sometimes physically abused. My parents hate each other and both have domestic violence charges against each other, yet they are still married. My husband has seen it all, 
in the almost 10 years we have been together and is an amazing, supportive person and truly understands. He is more of the mindset, just let them be. But part of me still wants a relationship with them. You know, I've just, I saw a, a, um, a news thing today about domestic violence. And everyone wants to have love from their parents. I, I get that. But this is domestic violence. And you really just focus on the energy that is good and have zero expectation. And I, I say this to everybody. Try not to have expectations on people and accept you know, the people in your life that, that really just bring on the love and bring in the, the, the positive energy. And if you see that they're not, you don't have to be around that. That really is really where it is. And if you don't have expectation, you can't be disappointed. Yeah. And I know that it's hard when it comes to your parents, but you know who they are, you know what they are, and you just have to just put it in a place where they can't affect you one way or the other. And the one thing you don't want them to do is affect your child. And because of their behaviors, it's probably best, sad to say, that they they are distant. Yeah, well, as with a lot of these, I think therapy is a great step just to try and keep moving forward and don't take for granted the things that, that you really do have. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Okay. Well, that's our show for tonight. So we want to thank you all for being a part of it. We are looking forward to seeing you next week and uh, have a safe week and enjoy. We're glad you're part of our show. Spread the word. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and by the way, tell your friends. <laughs> tell all your friends. Yeah. We want to, I, I'm still shooting for that, that, that plaque. You're making headway. I'm just looking for that flag. So whatever you guys can do to help dad get there, that's fantastic. And uh, I do believe that uh, Morgan's going to be doing from Two Hot Take another spring tour or a fall tour. And sometimes dad pops in on those shows. So I really do hope that we get to see each other again because those are so much fun. Yeah. They really are. By the way, we have one, head over to Patreon. We have one more group T for the month. And uh, those are the best. I really get to connect with you guys and be able to meet you and have a relationship. And I love that. Well, and, and there's, if you've never been on, there is so many stories over there. If you're needing some more content, some more stuff to listen to, maybe you got a long drive, maybe you're moving, who knows what's got, what's going on. There is so many stories over there that you'll have a lot to go through. So jump on and check it out. And by the way, you know, I've when when I really like shows, I go through the whole series again. I watched The Offer four times, 10 shows, 40 times. So if you really enjoy the show, sometimes you go back and hear them again, you might pick something up that you never you never picked up on the first time. Yeah. So there you go. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>